Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Erica and I make videos all about making money on the side as well as making and selling candles. And today's video, I thought it would be interesting to go over kind of a comparison between buying your supplies from an actual candle supplier like Candle Science or any local suppliers that you have near you and buying your supplies from a local craft store such as Michael's or Hobby Lobby. So I went out and I purchased um, some items from Hobby Lobby. So we're gonna be comparing it to the soy wax candles that I make and I got some soy wax from Hobby Lobby. Now, this is not necessarily to, it's not a bashing video. It's not to say that Hobby Lobby is a terrible place to get your supplies. It's nothing like that. It's really just to test it out and see because you never know unless you try it out. And a lot of people in the Facebook candle making group that I'm in, um, they do get their supplies from these places. So it's kind of also just to show that if you want to get one really high quality supplies, you do kind of have to invest a little bit more money in to it um, but if you're just starting out and you're just more in the hobby hobby phase of it I don't see anything wrong with getting your supplies from Michaels or Hobby Lobby if it's gonna make you excited and happy to start candle making then just go and get it you don't have to spend hundreds of dollars to get started on something if you don't know that you're gonna like it so um, let's go ahead and get started into it so this is just a hundred percent natural soy wax so it doesn't really give you anything about what kind of wax it is or really what it has in it. Um, but it does say on the front right here, it says a very high performance soy blend that is suitable for containers of all sizes, high, resi high resistance to fat blooming, AKA frosting. Um, I've never heard it called fat blooming before, so that's kind of interesting. Um, a natural and renewable source environmentally friendly product, even adhesion to container walls optimized for container candle production. Um, so that makes me think of is, do people say that this is supposed to be used um, to make and sell candles? I don't necessarily know. Um, so again, we're gonna try it out. Um, it, does, it does come in the flake form, which is different than the wax that I have. So the wax that I use comes in the hard slabs. So we're going to measure this out. I already did all of my math on this paper, so hopefully this video will go a little bit more smoothly. So I have all of my candle making supplies right here to the right of me. So we're gonna just go ahead and measure out the amount of wax needed and um, I am going to be using these um, eight ounce mason jars. So the wax, the jar, the wicks, and the fragrance oil is all coming from Hobby Lobby. The only thing that I'm using um, for the actual, that's going to be the actual, like a part of the jar itself is the wick stickers. So I'm going to assume that a hobbyist or somebody just starting out is going to be using something like a hot glue gun to secure their wick down. So I'm not gonna try to put that into the cost at the end of the video, um, just because I feel like that'll get a little bit too complicated. So we're going to just do just a basic eight ounce mason jar that I did pick up from Hobby Lobby. And we are going to compare it to my nine ounce straight jar. So this is um, the buttered popcorn that I made in my last video where I was talking about calculated fragrance oil percentage and wax weight. So I will link that in the description box below if you guys are curious um, about how I made this one. So we're gonna just compare it to that one. So let's go ahead and measure out this wax. So I'm gonna pull this to up here and this based on my calculations um, is going to take 137 grams of wax. I'm back to grams you guys in my last video I did ounces so we're gonna be going back to grams just because it's so much easier so this is gonna be 137 grams so let's pour this in here. Wow, I will say that was so much easier getting the exact weight, uh, weight with the flakes. So much easier than trying to cut up the blocks that I have into tiny little pieces. Okay, before I put it away, I need to check the degrees that we need to melt it to. So 155 degrees it wants us to melt it to. So that's not very hot to get it to melt it all the way down, but we're going to listen. So I'm going to put this in here. It's going to start melting down. I put in the thermometer, so it seems like it's going to melt down pretty fast. So while that is melting i'm gonna put in some footage while i'm talking right now of me just walking through hobby lobby and when i was looking at everything i was just trying to get a gauge of like 
what they had, what prices everything was. I was looking at how many week, how many wicks you got for the price it was. I was looking at the kind of scents they had. Um, they had all different kinds of wax too. They had paraffin, gel wax. Um, they had a wax that I can't even remember what the name of it is right now. Um, but I was just kind of looking through. They were, they had the blocks of wax or the or the um, bags. And um, it was interesting looking at everything. I believe their pouring pitcher though was like insanely priced, really, really expensive. And um, it makes sense though that everything would be priced higher at craft stores and these kind of places because you aren't getting it in bulk. You aren't getting like the quote unquote, like the wholesale price of it um, just because it's, I mean, it's a retail store. You're not gonna be getting all this stuff in bulk. And even if you did, get all these coupons that Michaels and Hobby Lobby have, it doesn't really give you enough to have a very sustainable, consistent price that you can base your, your price off of um, because it could be different all the time. The coupons could change even though it's always 40% off, but it's only 40% off one item. So if you're going to make multiple candles you'd have to go in there many different times and try to use the coupon over and over and over again and that would just that would take a long time this is almost melted down this became almost completely liquid at about 110 degrees just so you guys know all right so got it up to ah, got it up to 155 and i'm gonna put that right over there and then we're gonna measure out the fragrance oil let me move this out of the way of my face so um, we're going to be doing grams and we're going to be doing 14 grams to create a total of 10% and go ahead and get this. All right. So just pouring that in there. I think I forgot to mention, but this scent is called watermelon cooler. It smells really, really good. go okay so so far um i mean it melted well it did melt really really early which means that if you did use this wax to actually make and sell candles and you were somewhere like a farmer's market or, or somewhere where the sun was going to beat down on you i mean your candles would melt really really quickly um from just you know a slight increase in the temperature so that would probably be an issue um in terms of just actually making the candle i mean it it seemed pretty normal the wax melted down it looked like it didn't create like a weird smell or anything the wax didn't smell strange um and then pouring it is pretty smooth I don't really see any issues when it comes to that. I am curious with how the wick is going to um, perform with it just because, um, you know, I don't really know. It doesn't have, this wick doesn't necessarily have a name to it. Okay, now we are going to get into the actual numbers of everything and um, just to be fully transparent with what I got today, um, at Hobby Lobby I spent $17.14 and that was getting the jar, the wax, the wick, and the fragrance. And I did get to use a 40% off coupon for the wax. So technically the wax at full price was $10, but I got, got it for $6. Um, so again, with my issue when it comes to getting coupons and deals with this kind of stuff is that yes, you can go when they're having deals, um, but they're not always gonna have deals and then your cost of goods kind of fluctuates um, very extremely and you don't necessarily want that all the time. You want your cost of goods to be pretty consistent um, throughout a long period of time just so you know that when you're pricing things you don't have to adjust it um, too drastically. Um, so what I did was I went through and I did a um, breakdown of how much it cost to make this candle versus the candles that I make, um, specifically the candle right here that I made. So um, just breaking everything down, yes, we are going to go based off of buying in bulk um, versus buying everything that I bought today. So um, just kind of going over Hobby Lobby first 
is um, the wicks in itself. Uh, I got six wicks in that container or in the bag, and it was $3.49 for six wicks, which means that it was 58 cents a wick. And um, the bag that I got was two pounds, um, which made it for, well, it was, you know, it was $9.99. So it made it $4.99 a pound. And, and I used 137 grams of wax, which made it $1.66. And with the fragrance oil, that was $3.99 an ounce. I used 14 grams, which made it $2. And the jar itself was $2.29. So that was a grand total of $6.38. Um, I'm also planning you guys on making a video on how I calculate, um, on how I just calculated all of that. Um, it'd take way too long in just the short amount of time to explain that, um, but I am planning on making a video soon on how exactly I calculate um, how much a candle costs, like, like the whole cost of goods on everything. Moving on to my candles. So um, I was adjusting for the 50 wicks that I get in a bag, which is $4.75. That breaks down to 10 cents a wick. Um, the wax that I use is $1.59 a pound. So with the amount of wax that I used in there, um, which was 154 grams, broke down into 54 cents for the wax in the container. Um, the fragrance oil, uh, when I averaged out the cost um, of fragrance oil in bulk, um, it breaks down into $1.16 an ounce. Um, and I used uh, 16 grams, so that was 66 cents for the fragrance oil. And for the jar from Amazon, um, I uh, got it in a case of 12, and it broke down to $1.75 for the jar. And I did throw in the wick sticker with mine. Uh, with the Hobby Lobby candle, I did not, but with mine I did. And uh, for this candle, for nine ounces, um, which is technically six ounces, if you know what I mean. So six ounces of weight, nine ounce jar. For this nine ounce jar, it cost me $3.10 to make the candle versus the eight ounce mason jar. It cost me $6.38. So a big difference there, especially when you get a little bit more with the nine ounce jar than you do with the eight ounce mason jar. And um, it is interesting breaking it down and seeing the actual cost of everything. So again, we're going to come back a little bit later on tonight. It's around 1.30, I believe, in the afternoon. So I'll come back a little bit later on tonight and then we'll do kind of a test to see what it looks like, to see how it's settled, if there's any holes or you know sinkholes or any uneven texture on the top of this wax. And I'm very curious. All right, so here's a close-up of what this Hobby Lobby candle looks like after it's all done. So what I'm seeing on here is that it's actually decently smooth it does have a little bit of bumpiness right there I don't see any sinkholes and of course right there by the wick it did get a little bit lifted but I think that was my fault just because I was kind of trying to adjust it continuously um, while it was cooling down so that was definitely my fault um, but overall just kind of all around it it doesn't really have any frosting to it that I can see. However, keep in mind this has only been a day later, so I made these yesterday. So we don't necessarily know until uh, it's been a little bit, sometimes it can set and um, cause a little bit of frosting. So this one over here is the candle that I made with my um, Soy 10 wax. And as you can see a little bit with uh, around the wick, um, it did get a little bit bumpy right there, but for the most part, it is really, really smooth. No sinkholes. However, on this one, I'm going to try to show it. So as you can see, there is a little bit of frosting right there. No, I still, I don't see any frosting on this one. So, but the one that I do make, it does have a little bit of frosting to it. So that's actually really interesting. So, um, I, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to burn these and we're going to come back in about four hours and see how they're doing and of course i know i didn't really center these very well so i apologize oh one more thing so the cold throw on these is uh both actually really good so this one is watermelon and the cold throw is actually really really good i did 10 percent on both of these and i would say they are about equal when it comes to the cold throw of course they're both completely different scents so it's hard to kind of judge them side by side with them both being two different scents but for the most part this is actually a really really good 
um, cold throw considering it was from Hobby Lobby. So we're going to light these and see how the hot throw is after about four hours. Okay, so I couldn't wait any longer. This is after two hours. They've both pretty much reached full melt pool. Um, it's really hard to see, especially with the lighting, but you can kind of see there is a ring around that one a little bit. This one's melted pretty much completely over. Um, and to be honest, the wicks are actually doing pretty good. Um, this one, I just kind of threw the candle together in the video that I made. So I can't remember if I did the right wick. I think I did an Eco 10 with that one. So I think it is the right wick, um, but I can't remember exactly. And then um, for this one, it was just like the medium wick for two to three inch diameter jars. So for the most part, it's actually doing pretty good and I'm pretty surprised. So the next part is um, I'm gonna blow these out and then wait a minute or two for like the smoky smell to dissipate and then we're gonna test the hot throw on these. I apologize about the lighting. It is uh, nighttime right now and I just didn't feel like getting my studio lights out. So with this, you don't really need to see too much of um, lighting. So I'm just going to smell these. Okay. So in terms of the hot throw and in terms of what I was actually smelling around my apartment, um, I did not really smell the watermelon one at all. I definitely smelled the popcorn one more. I don't know if that's because the popcorn scent is just in general is a stronger scent. I feel like I should have done a watermelon one with this one to kind of be able to tell. Um, actually, I think it's probably better that I didn't because that way I can really smell which one was more powerful, which in this case was the um, popcorn scent, but when I was um, the cold throw on it, I think I had said in the previous clip that they were pretty much identical. So just kind of getting, yeah, this one, this fragrance is a lot, a lot more um, potent, a lot more strong when it comes to the hot scent. Um, now, I'm going to reiterate this because this experiment was mainly just to test the Hobby Lobby supplies to make a candle. And to be honest, it's not a bad candle. I mean, the jar itself is, I mean, it's a nice regular um, mason jar, the eight ounce mason jar. Um, the wax uh, was pretty smooth on top. It did have a little bit of those grooves to it that was kind of weird, but for the most part, it was a pretty smooth top. Um, the wick uh, worked actually pretty well with this diameter jar, and that was surprising as well. So. Overall, for a Hobby Lobby candle, it really performed pretty decently. Now, would I recommend this for people who want to create a business? No, I really wouldn't recommend it. Would I recommend it to people who want to make candles as a hobby? Yeah, I would actually, um, especially because it's very um, accessible to a lot of people. Not a lot of people are able to order from online candle suppliers just because of the, the cost of shipping. But if you are interested in starting it as a hobby and possibly giving it out to people or making it as gifts, I would invest in a kit. And I'll leave some kit uh, kits in the description box below, just different sites where you can get um, starter kits and have it be a little bit easier. That way you aren't kind of all over the place with what you should get, where you, what kind of wax and what kind of supplies you should get. So I'll leave that in the description box below, but I think that's my video. I don't think there's pretty much any more to say. I hope you guys found this interesting and I think that's all. So I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys. A lot of people kind of go back and forth about whether or not you should get your supplies from Hobby Lobby or Michaels. Why right now? Why? Can I say that in the videos?